KMAC is a proud corporate partner of Texas Tech Athletics. There's nothing like it. The excitement of Texas Tech men's basketball. This is KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Tip-Off. All right, welcome back to Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Tip-Off. On location here in an undisclosed location, David Collier alongside Eric Kelly this morning getting you ready for the regular season finale between Texas Tech and Baylor tomorrow at 3 o'clock. For more on the Baylor Bears, let's check in with our buddy Matt Roberts in Waco. At long last, the Baylor men's basketball team won their first conference championship since 1950, gutting out a win in overtime against the West Virginia Mountaineers for a team that was officially eliminated from title contention in that building last year. A pretty sweet feeling for the Bears on Tuesday night. It means a lot, um, especially for Coach Drew and Coach Tang. Um, all the guys that had through Baylor, Tweety Carter, Rico Gathers, just guys like that. It just means a lot to the program. Um, it just means a lot to me uh, just to do it with these guys. They're such great guys. And um, just probably the top number one moment ever at Baylor, you know, <laughs> past all the games, all that. Scott Drew, the architect of one of the biggest turnarounds in college basketball history. He's now coached the Bears in 262 games in 18 years as a ranked team. In the 97 years prior to his arrival, Baylor played two games as a ranked team, building a consistent winner that competes year in and year out in one of the best conferences in the country. Uh, first, I've learned from my dad and uh, a Hall of Fame coach, and uh, he always says you got to adapt what you do to your personnel. And then, to be honest, our staff has done a great job putting our players in position to be successful. And then, obviously, if you don't have uh, capable players, uh, you're not winning. But one, one thing that me personally, I was on uh, Coach Huggins' uh, radio show last night, and I think uh, I've grown a lot over 18 years as a coach because when you compete against the best night in and night out, and there's been so many Hall of Fame coaches in the Big 12, you really learn a lot. And uh, I've learned a lot from all of them. Back on the floor with questions about the Bears conditioning after a three-week layoff. Those were answered, outlasting the sixth-ranked Mountaineers in overtime on their home floor. We were all just talking about how we can get back to playing our game and what that meant to us. And it was really just, it's, it's just mentality. Like, we were all in decent shape by the time Iowa State and Kansas started. It just, uh, we just had to encourage each other. And we had the weight of, like, being undefeated on us, and then we lost against Kansas. And now it's like a total reset. The Bears will close out the regular season on Sunday, hosting Texas Tech, a team they've owned as of late, winning five of their last six meetings against the Red Raiders, including seven straight at the Farrell Center in Waco. Covering the Bears for all 12 courtside, I'm Matt Roberts. Thank you, Matt. Okay, let's take a look at those Big 12 standings. As Matt and we have mentioned, Baylor, the regular season champs already locked up. Bears are atop those standings, 20-1, and 12-1 in conference play. Then you got a tie for second, not by wins, but by winning percentage, West Virginia and Kansas. Then after that, Texas, Oklahoma State at 4-5, and five respectively. And then you got Texas Tech. Oklahoma, now the team that's going to play that intro game first day of the Big 12 tournament. And then the usual suspects, TC, Kansas State, Iowa State, rounding it out. Okay, let's bring back in Phil Mayer. He's also he's always our first place man, top of the table. Okay, Phil, so anytime you play a team like Baylor, plenty is going to have to go right for the Red Raiders to pull off an upset. But blank is particularly imperative. Look at it, he's got me saying big words, defending the three-point line. Well, defending the three-point line was, was my fill in the blank, but uh, it is gonna be important for the Red Raiders to do that because, you know, Baylor's always a good defensive team, but what's really putting this year's team over the top is the three-point shooting. As a team, they're 42% on the year. That is the best mark in college basketball. And it's easy to see why when you look up and down their roster. Every rotation player that actually shoots threes is over 40%, aside from Macy OT. And look at Baylor's one loss that lost to Kansas. They were six for, 20, six for 26 from three. So it is pretty important, of course, that they do hit their threes. They came, they came out of the gates after that long COVID pause, a little cold from beyond the arc but they're back in their sweet spot, over 40% in each of their last two games. Phil, I apologize, the bow tie. It's been a week since I had it on. Okay, okay. It's restricting <laughs> the thoughts going off. to my head. It's the whole thing. It's just super <laughs> cloudy up there right now. You're forgiven. <laughs> I, hey, before we, get, before we uh, go to commercial, I got a question for you, Eric. I got the Chris Beard bingo card here, yeah. and Coach Drew said Hall of Fame coaches. Can I mark that out for Coach Beard? 
<laughs> we'll allow it. Yeah, we'll allow it. Okay, time. sweet. Sweet. I'm, I've almost got it. I've almost got it. All right, time for another break here on Countdown to Tip Off. When we return, it's the age old question Will one of us use alliteration in crashing the boards? Stay tuned to find out. I'll keep my crashing the boards bingo card ready. And still ahead, we draft <laughs> some teams with hopefully as little math as possible.